What is up, it's the Figure Hunter. Today we have a longer term comparison of Garmin's HRV, nightly HRV values relative to Whoop's HRV nightly values. Obviously the Garmin and the Whoop sort of going head to head. They both provide a summary or a snapshot of your HIV average score over the course of a night. And many people, or at least a number of subscribers have asked, how do these two data points compare? And that's the whole point that we're going to look at today in this review. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. We are not here to assess which one is more accurate. We're only here to compare or contrast the differences of what data values are coming from the Garmin nightly HRV summary, as well as the Whoop nightly HRV summary, and just sort of see what we see from those charts. Are they following a similar path? Are the scores in line with each other? If they're not, how much difference is there between them? Are there moving averages that, you know, com comparatively the same? And is there anything unique we can see about the data points that we're getting from Garmin versus from Whoop? This is a 50 night summary of data points across 50 nights. And we're going to do a couple simple things. Number one, we're going to look at the apps to see how each of the apps, the Garmin Connect system, as well as the Whoop, the Whoop app itself displays and shows you your nightly HRV value and how it you know, summarizes the value over longer periods of time. And we're going to see it in the Whoop app, how it shows you your nightly HRV value and what you can get on over the longer term averages, just in simple form. We're not going to do a deep dive on each as far as how they extrapolate data in, you know, charts or reports or anything like that. So that's the first thing we do is look at the apps and how they show the information. Number two, we're going to look at charts of data. And within that charts of a data, we're going to look at six basic charts. Number one, we're just going to look at the simple data plot. What were the, you know, Garmin HRV, you know, nightly HRV data points for 50 nights and what were the whoops for 50 nights? Number two, we're going to look at it with a trend line, looking at a six day moving average, just to see if the trend line looks the same, like the overall six day moving average trend is similar in overall scope or size or overall flow between the two. Three, we're going to look at the data points with the polynomial trend line, which is another type of trend line you can use when data is sort of a little bit all over the place. Number four, we're going to look at the data points when you overlay them on top, when you bring them more in alignment, because there you will see in the charts, there is a, you know, like a consistent difference between the two, like the two are over top. So we're going to put them on top of each other and see what information we can glean from that or what stands out from that. In number five, we're going to look at the seven day moving average chart between the two. And then on six, we're going to look at the seven day moving averages. So let's say the moving average is up here. We're going to line them up and see what we see from that overlay of the seven day moving averages for each of the devices. So with that, let's dive into what we can see in the app and how each of them displays the HRV values from your last night's sleep. All right. So this is how Garmin presents the information. So you get your seven day average up top with the HRV nightly. Uh, assessment and then you see the actual last night's results down below and you can see it just sort of tracks across time across the night's sleep and shows you all the data from each particular night and you can see it for any particular night and you can see what it was throughout the night and your continual moving seven day average you can see your seven day average moving here as you can see it sort of in the baseline that you want to keep it in in the green or if it falls below the baseline you'll see that trend drop down below and will change colors if you're overdoing it based on a seven day trend. And then with what Whoop shows here, you can see just in your recovery or on the overview page, you see your average heart rate variability throughout the night. They don't show your actual data from the previous night. So if you dive in, all you get is a month at a glance or a week at a glance. You don't get to see your actual last night's details, but they do show you your summary or your average HRV based on how they calculate it. And I know it's not a straight line average calculation with whoop. They, I think, overweight the end of the night, which is ironic because of what we'll see in the data charts, um, because whoop comes out lower than Garmin's does. And Garmin's basically, obviously you can see that it increases most often at the end of the night you'll see an increase or rise in HRV. So let's look at the data on right. the chart. All right, so this first chart is just the pure data points across 50 or 53 or some large amount. So 50 different nights, we'll say. Um, you can see in blue, the Garmin nightly, as well as in red, 
the whoop nightly, you can see that Garmin typically is a few um, values higher for HRV. This is just the summary of the average for Garmin for each of the nights as well. This is not a seven day average. This is just the singular nights average for the HRV compared to the single nights average as calculated by whoop, which again, does not calculate in a straight line average. So this is just the data points overlaid on top of each other for 50 nights. So then we can see a few different trend lines. We want to look and see if we can glean any more information. So here is a six day moving linear average as one compares to the other. And you can see that the chart starts to sort of, obviously there's a gap or a difference, but the difference between the two six day linear averages um, trend line is showing that there is, a, you know, basically they're following the same path or the same average flow. And then if we look at a polynomial, you can see that the polynomial, um, which just is a trend line when you have multiple data points that aren't following the same linear progression, but the polynomial trend line actually looks very similar. So the curvature is very similar, although it's just at a different magnitude. So we see that if we were going to extract some sort of recommendation for recovery, that they're following a similar polynomial and a somewhat similar, uh, similar six day moving average. So then if we get into true seven day averages, uh, this is the, oh, I'm sorry, correct. This is actually the pure data lined up more specifically on top of each other. So if we subtract down, the higher values that Garmin is getting and more line it up with whoop in the same sort of midline, you can see, and this is just, you know, taking the Garmin minus um, an average difference between the two. Um, and so you can see that they line up very, very similarly um, when the whoop seems to spike and show higher HRV, it spikes at a, higher multiple than Garmin does. Obviously you can see the red line for whoop spikes much higher in those instances where there's higher HRV being recorded. Okay. So now we can see an overlay or see the similarity. So this is just the pure seven day moving average. If you're going to look at the seven day average with whoop or the seven day average with Garmin, this is what that, that average would look like. So for the 50 nights, but looking at seven day chunks, in that moving average. So you can see that again, when there is recovery, Whoop's change in value is much more pronounced or significant than Garmin's change in value, but that the path looks the same. And then if we overlay these on top of each other, just by subtracting um, the same data points from the Garmin top line blue, you can see a little bit clearer picture of again, how Whoop is overestimating, or I mean, it, it obviously, I'm not assessing if one is more correct than the other. I'm just assessing the differences between the two as far as the data they extract. You can see that when there is recovery or there is higher HRV, that WHOOP shows it at a more enhanced um, increase. So the seven day moving average increases more significantly because of those singular night, much higher HRV values in the night where the Whoop assesses that there was better recovery or higher HRV. So let's talk about it in general. Okay, so what do we see in summary? Although there's a definitive data point difference, both are following similar trend lines or similar moving averages. What we can also sort of notice from the data is that additionally, the higher HRV value nights on the Whoop system are showing much higher or a more pronounced difference in the HRV assessed score for the whoop, you know, a near more no, no, notably more pronounced HRV score, which also we've, we're showing or seeing that it creates hypothetically in the periods, periods of recovery within the system, a bigger shift or a more higher degree shift in the HRV seven day moving averages. So I'm not saying either one is right or wrong. We're just looking at what we can see from 50 nights at a snapshot between the Garmin HRV nightly, as well as the whoop HRV assessed nightly. So with that, take it for what you will. And let me know if you have any particular thoughts that stand out from what we can see about how each of these devices is bringing about different scores or more importantly, what we can see 
with what the scores over a longer term trend line can help us to glean one device to the other. It's the Figure Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.